So unit four, lesson three. So this one is where now we're doing the adding, subtracting, and rational expression. So when I was talking to you about rational expressions in the first two days, what did we say was important that we need to remember how to do? Factor, yes. Good. Okay, but with regards 385, for regards to today, when you're adding common denominators, good. So common denominators are going to be huge today because we're adding, subtracting rational expressions, which to us is adding, subtracting fractions with expressions. Okay, so we are going to have to have um, common denominators. So recall these steps in adding, subtracting rational numbers. So determine the lowest common denominator, okay, or common denominator, expressed as a rational number. And then you combine them from the top, bottom, by adding, subtracting, whichever you're supposed to do. Okay, so just a quick refresher on common denominator, just basic. This is not today's lesson. Okay, this is just fraction review. So I have a 3 and a 5. Does 3 go into 5? No, so I'm going to multiply them by each other. This is how you find a common denominator if you forgot. Okay. By multiplying by each other, 3 times 5 and 5 times 3 is 15. So I'm going to have 15 from the bottom. That's my common denominator. Okay, then I just go 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 10 plus 6, I get 16 over 15. I prefer improper fractions, so mixed numbers you don't need to do. Okay. Questions on that. Okay. And I will say that they say you find the least common multiple, but to me, when you're doing common denominators, unless four goes into six, just multiply them by each other. It's not that much harder. Okay, and it always works. Okay, it always works. So if I just say, I'm not even looking for stuff, I just say I'm multiplying this by six and this by four. And just know you wherever you do the bottom, you have to do the top. And you're already ready, you're ready to go. Okay? So this one here would be, my common denominator is 24 for both of them. My first one is 20 over 24. My second one is 6 over 24. And with 20 minus 6, 14 over 24. We can reduce. I'd like you to reduce if you can, and that would be 7 twelfths. Okay. All right. When you have three of them, and you're going to get this a lot with your stuff today, you want to do kind of just do two and then do the third one. Okay. Um, I would do, so I just go ahead and do these, eight times three. So I go three, eight, eight, three. So that's 21 over 24 minus uh, 16 over 24. 21 minus 16 is 5. So now I have 5 over 24 plus 5 over 12. That's where I'm at. So I combine these two. I got 5 over 24, and I'm adding the 5 twelfths. Okay, does 12 go into 24? It does, so this one we can do a little bit easier. We can go 5 over 24. I'm going to times this by 2. 10 over 24. So we get 15 24 is our answer positive. Um, that does reduce, actually, doesn't it? Okay, so we can reduce that to 5 eighths. Sorry. There we go. That's the good answer. That's a quick common denominator review. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple of ones where it's just easy, um, just easy one variable. Okay, that's why today's a good time to have this lesson because it's kind of the beginner one. So just kind of get us started. So we're going to do the same thing here. We still want to get a common denominator. So focus on getting the bottoms the same, and then we're going to put the stuff on top together. So I'm going to focus on these two first, and we'll do this one last again. So I'm going to go times 5, times 4, okay, times 4, times 5. So that changes my 3x over 4 to 15x over 20. That changes my x over 5 to 4x over 20. And then I have minus 7x over 10. Okay, so I'm going to put the 2 on the left together. That's going to give me 19x over 20. 
Can I make a 10 of 20? Yeah, I can multiply by 2. So that's negative 14x over 20. 19x minus 14x is 5x. That reduces to x over 4. 5 over 20 is 1 fourth. 1x over 4. Okay, and then just, just so you understand, these are the same. If the book has this, 1 fourth x is the same. Okay, all right, so part B, cool. The good news on part B is um, 3 and 6 go into each other, so it's going to be a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to multiply the left one by 2. Now, when I multiply the 2 to the top, remember, it's going to distribute. It's going to hit both things. It's going to hit everything on top. So now I have this. I have 6a minus 2 over 6 plus 4a plus 5 over 6. So I have a common denominator. Now it's just doing like terms. Okay? The 6s are kind of irrelevant. It's 6a plus 4a, so I get 10a. Negative 2 plus 5, so I get 3. 10a plus 3 over 6. Okay. We're all kind of quick right now. I know you're probably wore out, but do we have questions so far? No? Everything's okay? All right. Okay. All right. So this one's going to be a little bit uglier because 3 does not go into 8. So we're going to do the by each other. 8 and 8. 3 and 3. So 24 is my denominator. Okay. My top. 8 times 3, 24y. Negative 9. Um, you could, if you want to break it up, you could have break, so if you want to reduce this one more, it'd be 10a over 6, which would be um, 5a over 3, but then you have to have a separate 3 over 6 plus 1 half. You can always cut the bottom, or the top, but if that was on the bottom, you couldn't do that. Okay. Sorry. So, next one. 16y and plus 8 over here. Okay, I want you to make sure this is where a lot of mistakes happen on tests here. This minus is hitting both of these. So the way I like to do it, I like to go 24 minus 16, negative 9 minus 8. Okay, so 24 minus 16 is 8y. Negative 9 minus 8 is negative 17, all over 24. And I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Still nothing? No questions? All right. All right, so now we're just kind of doing examples here. So we're going to simplify this one. Um, the big one on these is understanding that if it's just something, it's always over 1. If it's just a whole, it's over 1. Okay. So I'm going to multiply. Does 2, 1, and all go into 8? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 4, multiply this by 8. Distribute 28x plus 12, all over 8, plus 24x, all over 8, and then minus x minus 3 over 8. Okay, so my x is I have a 28 plus a 24 minus a 1. So that's going to be a 51x. I have a 12 plus a minus a minus, which is a plus 3. So 12 plus 3 is 15. So the minus a minus there. All over 8. Okay. All right, part B, again, 3 goes into 9 and 1 goes into 9. So we're going to leave the middle, and we're going to multiply 3 here and multiply 9 here to get all common denominators. So that gives me 36 over 9 minus y minus 4 over 9 minus distribute 15 minus 9y all over 9. 
So there's everything with a common denominator. So my numbers, I have 36 minus a negative 4, so that's plus 4, that's 40, minus 15, that's 25. So my numbers are 25. I have a negative y, because it's minus as it hits the y, a negative y minus a negative 9, which is plus 9. So this is like saying negative y plus 9y, which would be 8y. And it's all over 9. Okay, did I lose somebody on the y's there? It's just minus and minuses. Combine like terms. Okay. All right, let's keep flying then. Okay, this here is to simplify and then state non-permissible uh, values. So what were non-permissible values again? That goes back to lesson one. No. Yeah, and what, what are, Sarah, what can we not have on, on the bottom? So anytime I get zero on the bottom, I can't do that. Well, all these have a common denominator, so x can't be what? Yeah, x can't be zero. It's that simple for that one, okay? And now this one is just combined. 2 plus 7 is 9, minus 1 is 8, so your answer for this one simplifies 8 over x. So the non-permissible of x can't be zero. Okay, Kyle, what's a non-permissible on b? Well, what makes the bottom zero? Two times negative two is negative four. Zero, right? It's just zero. Okay, so a can't be zero. And now we do have a common denominator already, so we're going to put these together. 5a plus a, 6a. 3 plus negative 6 is a negative 3, all over 2a. There's your simplified fraction. Okay. Emma, what's my non-permissible for C? Yep, one-third, good. She adds the one, divides the three, one-third. We have a common denominator. Now look at this, 3y minus 1 over 3y minus 1, what's that equal? One. Same thing over the same thing. Okay, and Logan, what's my non-permissible for D? Negative 3, good. So X cannot be negative 3. That's my non-permissible. So these are your non-permissibles at the bottom if you're writing your notes in. Okay, we have common denominator. 4X minus 2X, I get 2X. 10 minus 4, I get 6 over X plus 3. Okay, does anybody see anything else I can do here? What's that? Yeah, I can make it smaller. I can take a 2 out on the top, which gives me an x plus 3. And what happens to the x plus 3s? They cancel. So your answer is actually 2 for the simplified fraction there. So remember, we always want to GCF and factor if we can. All right, we're on the final. Final couple coming here. All right. Actually, yeah. All right. Simplify, express the answer to the lowest terms, and state any restrictions on the variables. So your restrictions are, again, the non permissibles. So, for example, my restrictions on these is just P can't be zero, right? Can't have P be zero. Um, can't have Y be zero. Can't have x be 0, and let's see here, still a, so they're all the same, they're all just can't be zeros. Okay, they're all just can't be zeros. Okay, so now, now there's variables on the bottom. That's okay, we're still going to do what we got to do to make them be the same. So 3p and 7p, I can still multiply this by 7. And we'll split by 3, and I'll get 21p on the bottom. 21p on the bottom, that means I'm good. So 7 and 3, 35 over 21p plus 6 over 21p 
gives me 41 over 21p. And p can't be 0. Okay, so now we're getting to where you have to pay attention to what are you missing. So, Adam, what is missing on the right the bottom here compared to the left? A y, right? So I know I have to multiply this by y and a y. I think your y's down there. They have to have a y. And you can multiply any fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top. Okay? And the other thing I'm going to multiply is by a 3 and by a 5. So it's still, look, it's still by each other. Three y's coming over here and five's coming over here. Okay? So uh, that gives me five on top over 15 y. That gives me 18 y on top over 15 y. So that gives me five plus 18 y all over 15 y. And you'll leave it like that. You could bust them up, Eli, if you wanted to, but I only bust them up if, it, if both of them uh, simplify. Like the 18 and the 15 y do, but well, I guess you could do both of them, but I don't know. If you wanted to, I guess here I'll do it. If you wanted one more step, it'd be 1 over 3y plus um, 6y over 5y. And those y's would cancel, so 6 over 5 if you wanted to. But this is fine. Okay, um, C, I have a 6x and a 3x, so I can multiply this by a 2. I don't have to multiply the left one. Okay, I don't have to multiply the left one. So I'm going to get 2x minus 5 over 6x minus 2 times 3 is 6x minus 4 all over 6x. So I have 2x minus 6x, that's negative 4x. Um, negative 5 minus a negative 4, which is a plus 4, gives me a negative 1. That's as simple as it gets. Negative 4x minus 1, all over 6x. All right, part D. What is, like, we have an a squared and an a, so what am I going to have to do? What's that? Yeah, well, we want to get this to be a square, so how do you make an a a square? You times it by another another a. So I know I need another a over here. And then just to steal the number, 2. So look, what's 5 times 2? 10. a times a, 10 squared. Times this by 5, I'm going to have a 10a squared. So again, it's by each other with shades of gray. We didn't have to do it by an a2. 2a, two. Two 5. This gives me 5a plus 35 up top, all over 10a squared. Gives me a 6a all over 10a squared. Okay, <clears throat> that gives me 5 minus 6, negative a, plus 35, all over 10a squared. Okay. I'm going to stop there. We'll finish the last page on Friday. Okay, we'll do the last page on Friday.